Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. This is video number 19 in my series, Ask Photography Target Tips. And in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite targets, the Jellyfish Nebula. This is one of those ones where I first saw it on Instagram and I thought, wow, that is amazing. It's one of those targets that looks exactly like the name. You know, there's some that's hard to see what they're talking about. But this one, you definitely see it right away. And I just thought it was such a cool target. And I knew that I had to image it for myself. And I did. I've actually shot this target before last year. Um, but we're going to talk about some of the challenges because this is definitely not an easy one. I wouldn't say the hardest, but it's I would say it's definitely in the top three or five hardest targets that I personally have imaged so far. Now, the Jellyfish Nebula is a supernova remnant, so a star that exploded, and this is what's left over. And uh, it's the challenge with it in particular is that it's quite dim. Now, it's a magnitude 12. Now, if you saw my uh, video on the Ghost of Cassiopeia, I went on about how difficult that target was, and that's a magnitude 13. So, very similar. It's a little bit more dim than this one, but both are quite challenging. And as we'll talk about later in the video, what's so challenging about the jellyfish is that it's very inconsistent as far as brightness. There's some very bright portions of the target and some very dim ones, and that always makes for a challenge for processing. But we'll talk about that and a lot more. Let's first of all talk about location and where to find the Jellyfish Nebula. Now it's located in the constellation Gemini. Now Gemini is definitely a visible constellation even in light polluted skies like mine here in Toronto, but it's not one of those ones I'd say that are immediately recognizable. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, like Auriga or Cassiopeia, you look for it, or of course, uh, Orion. You know, you don't even need to look for it, you see it right away. Gemini is a little bit more challenging in light polluted skies um, it does have some bright stars, particularly Castor and Pollock, which you can see in the image here on the left side of it. Those are definitely among the brighter ones that you'll notice, but um, it's fairly large and some of the stars are not so bright. So you're not going to see the entire sort of shape of the constellation, at least not here in my Bartle eight and a half, nine skies. But for the Jellyfish Nebula, what's nice is it's nicely situated between two visible stars. Stars that are visible to the naked eye, even in my terrible skies. So that always makes it a lot easier to locate. So we're going to be focusing on the top right side of Gemini. And in particular, two stars called Tejet, or Tejet and Propus. Now I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. But those are two stars very close to each other um, that sort of stand out, I'm not say they stand out, but they're they're visible once you look for them and know where to find them. And as I mentioned, it's nice that the jelly you know that the jellyfish is right in between them. It's a fairly large target, so that makes it easier. And being able to see those two stars definitely makes it easier as well. When I was shooting this the first time with my uh, DSLR and my Sharp Star 76 millimeter, I would use live view on my camera and I could actually see those two stars, Tejan and Propus, on my screen. So I knew that I had the jellyfish. It was just more a matter of getting it centered left or right. This time around, I shot it with more focal length and uh, I wasn't able to see both stars, but I was using my go-to mount. But even still, had I been doing it manually, I would have used the star of Propus because Propus is the one um, that is literally right beside the jellyfish. So if Propus is in your frame of view, then it's very likely that the jellyfish is somewhere there. It's just a matter of doing a test shot and figuring out uh, is it above it or below it. So hopefully that helps as far as finding it. Gemini, Eastern Sky, find the two stars in the top right portion of that constellation and that's where the jellyfish is located. Let's talk about framing. Now framing you have some options because um, this is a fairly large target so you have some options as to what kind of telescope you want to use. Do you want to use something wide field like the Red Cat? 51 and just sort of do more a wide field where you're going to see those two stars and some of the surrounding gas. Or do you want to do more of a close up crop view like I did in my newest image where I use my Explore Scientific uh, 102 um, telescope along with the ASI 294. And that gave me quite a cropped view. And I wanted to really go for details and not worry so much about the surrounding gas. So it depends on what equipment you have and sort of what look you want to go for. But if you are doing something like the first time, as I mentioned, if you're using something a little bit more wide field like a Red Cat or my, the Sharp Star 76 millimeter, just may basically center those two stars, whether it's up or down, left or right, and then take a test shot somewhere around, I would say 30 seconds. Because this is a more faint object, you wanna make sure that you're at least seeing some of it to give you a frame of reference. 
and then use an app like Stellarium to see what it looks like and it's, you know, how it's positioned and make sure that everything is right on your camera screen. As mentioned, if you're going at it with more focal length and you're not using a go-to mount, use that star propus, the one that's right beside the jellyfish. Then do your test shot and make sure it's either above or below it and then make adjustments accordingly. But it's fairly easy to frame up. It sort of gives you that, those two stars give you a natural sort of indicator of where the target is. Let's talk about integration time. Now, this is one of those ones I'm going to tell you right off the bat. If you're new to astrophotography, um, you may want to stay away from this one. You can definitely go after it, but you're going to need to sink some time into it. This is not a two or three hour image for sure, unless you're in really dark skies because of how faint it is. I would recommend anywhere from six to 10 hours. Now, my very first image that I took last year, here it is there. Uh, that is a total of eight hours, I believe. Now, I originally had like six hours wasn't really happy with it and I sunk another two hours in and that sort of helped get a little more detail and helped with sort of making a pop as I was doing my curves and levels adjustments and just sort of showing enough detail that I would be happy enough with it. But in this case, in my newest image, I did it eight and a half hours. So basically the same amount of time. But what I want to focus on here is the difference between doing 60 second exposures and four minute exposures. Unfortunately, I don't have a single exposure available at the moment of the, I lost the data on it, of the first target. But I can tell you there wasn't a lot visible in that 60 second exposure. You could see the top part of the jellyfish, which we referred to earlier as the inconsistent brightness in this target. So parts of it are much more brighter than the rest. You should be able to see the top part and maybe a little bit of the tentacles, we'll call it. But you see on my four minute exposure, single exposure, on the latest uh, attempt, you can see almost the entire thing. Now, another thing I want to mention that I can't get into detail because I want to do a video on it is the um, is the filter that I was using. Now, I use the Optolong L Extreme, which is sort of my go-to for any emission target. But I also, for the second night, I use a different filter, uh, what I would consider a much better one. I, I don't want to give the name away. You guys, some of you guys probably know what it is, but I'm going to be doing a video on it. Uh, fairly soon so that also helped but the, the the picture that i'm showing is of the optolong l extreme you can definitely see a decent amount of detail and you can tell right away that the jellyfish is there so that was nice to see that's the difference between doing four minute and a 60 second and also you got to factor in as well that i'm using a telescope with a lot more focal length so it's generally speaking going to show more detail even just in a single exposure but definitely guys be ready to sink some time into this. This is going to likely going to be at least a two night project and one that you're going to want to spend as much as possible because it's going to make processing all that much easier. So let's talk about processing. I'm going to use my initial image um, as a reference for some of the key parts of the image. But as I mentioned, the biggest challenge is going to be um, getting the, the nebula itself to pop out without overexposing or blowing out certain portions of it. As I mentioned, the top part of the jellyfish is actually quite bright. Who knows what magnitude that is? Probably somewhere around a six or seven, but the rest of it is a 12. So it's really faint and it's so easy to get an inconsistent uh, image where parts of it are blown out and then parts of it you can barely see at all. So what I would suggest is after you do your initial stretches and your levels adjustments as we always do, and then you correct your color balance um, as we've talked about in many videos, using the Levels Adjustments tab with that box on the, in the um, sampler on the background, just to sort of correct the, the likely green tinge you already have now from doing your initial stretches. What I suggest is, um, first of all, I would lasso off the entire jellyfish and try to bring it out a little bit more as a whole but you're gonna to have to keep your eye on that top part. And as that top part starts to get bright, I would deselect the jellyfish itself and then just lasso off that top part of the, the um, image and also that star propus because that star propus is quite bright. That's also gonna blow out as you try to stretch the rest of the image. And what's happening is it's gonna to start to get bigger and bigger and all of a sudden you have like a huge star with a massive halo. And to me, it just doesn't look right. So that's what I did. I, lassoed off the top portion of the jellyfish and I also hit shift while doing that and then lassoed off the star propus and then I tried to find you know and then I selected inverse so I should mention that so now we're protecting those two 
and then I just try to very softly um, bring out the rest of the, the target. That's where the challenge comes in. You're going to have to really play with this one. Um, it's so easy to make it look inconsistent, to make it look like you did work on it separately, and the color tone doesn't match. So that's where you're going to have to be very careful in doing that experiment. Try, you know, if you find you're going too far, bring it back, undo, and just slowly uh, try to make the rest of that image pop out. The center part of the jellyfish is the most challenging by far. You know, I've seen images with 25, 30 hours, and there's a lot more nebulosity than in my image with only eight and a half hours. But that's just, you know, that's to be expected. You're never going to get the entire center of the jellyfish showing nebulosity. But you want to get as much as possible. So with those two areas protected, the star and the top part, just sort of do minor, minor stretches and then doing, using your levels adjustments afterwards to correct the color and just try to get a, a consistent and natural looking um, target with as much nebulosity showing as possible. Once you're happy with that, I would unselect the two parts you have selected and then sort of lasso off the entire image. Now you're going to work on it as an entire target. Okay, so the entire jellyfish itself. Make sure you're happy with the color balance and just overall how it looks. Play with sharpness, uh, structure, all those, you know, um, sliders in the camera raw filter. And then D, and then select inverse and work on the background. This is probably going to be the second most challenging part of this target. I always struggle with the background. I don't know what it is. You can see in my first image, I'm just it just doesn't look right. It looks inconsistent and there is definitely a lot of surrounding gas that oftentimes guys and girls include in their images. It looks like almost like the jellyfish is spouting out um, some fairly bright nebulosity, but also around it. I can never I can never quite get it looking. Right, and even this time around, I struggled again, even with the longer exposures and more focal length. Um, because I cropped it, it wasn't as much a factor. I was actually cutting out a lot of that background, but I can tell you now, it was definitely a struggle. So you're gonna wanna, once you've selected the jellyfish and then selected inverse to work on the background, you're gonna play, wanna play with the typical things. It's exposure, it's the darkness tab, the black point. Um, you're going to want to use gradient exterminator to sort of even out that background. We've talked about that many times in other videos. That's a plugin that you purchase for Photoshop that helps sort of automatically even out the background. And I, as I've always mentioned, it always works better when you have the target itself selected and, you, and you've selected inverse. So in other words, it's not even factoring in the jellyfish itself. It's only looking at the background and trying to figure out how to make that look even. But the best thing I say, guys, is you're going to have to play with it. It depends on your conditions. It depends on, you know, was there a moon out that night? Um, what filter were you using? It's going to be a challenge. That's all I can say. So play around with it. This one, again, it took me probably seven or eight tries to, to get it what I thought was looking right. And I just chose not to sort of include that real gas, the gas that's sort of shooting out of the jellyfish, because I did such a cropped version of it. I, I decided to sort of make that blend into the background, whereas you'll see a lot of pictures where that's actually quite prominent and bright. So it just depends on what you choose to do, you know, what telescope you're choosing to shoot with and how wide field you're going, whether or not you want to include that. But definitely a challenge. Those two areas, the, the top of it and that star propus, not blowing them out and trying to get the background even. Those are the two um, hardest challenges for sure. Now, once you're happy with those two things, I select, I uh, undid inverse, and now we're working on the jellyfish itself with it lassoed off. And again, just making some adjustments to make it pop now that you're happy with the background. And then for the very finale of processing, I just sort of collected, uh, selected key parts of the image to try to make, draw them out even more, particularly in the center where there's that real faint nebulosity. I'm selecting those and holding shift and selecting certain key parts at the same time so they look consistent. And then just sort of playing with exposure, playing with structure, playing with your brightness, trying to make it look natural and not obvious that I, I worked on it, but at the same time trying to draw them out and, and make even more nebulosity show up. So it's gonna be a challenge, don't get frustrated, be ready to sink some time into it. But the more integration time and the better the conditions, the easier the processing is going to be. Without a doubt, this was easier to process with the four minute exposures and, um, you know, selecting nights where there wasn't a, a huge moon or whatever, you know, making sure the conditions were right. 
that definitely went a long way in making the process seem even easier. I hope that helps guys. It's definitely a challenge. So if you, if you never, you know, if this is your first target, you may want to choose something else. But if you're adventurous, go, I say go for it. But if you've got a couple of images under your belt, definitely go for this one. It's a really cool target and one that will provide a challenge, but also a lot of reward for getting it right. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate your support and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Thank you.